What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in and subscribing. I've got a good show for you today. I know because I just filmed it and it was awesome. If you're just a general type follower of the channel but you haven't subscribed, I wish you would. It helps me out and I'd be glad to have you on board. Here we go. So my plan on this morning was to be as stealthy as possible and drop some live shiners in areas where I've known trout to be this time of year. As always, I'll be throwing a multitude of artificial baits and just trying to see what the trout are responding to best. Stay tuned till the end of the video for details about my float rig setup I'm using this morning. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Got a lot going on there. I got a pretty good trout here. Oh, shoot. All right. That is a pretty good trout. That is a pretty good trout right there, y'all. This one feels a little better, y'all. Oh yeah, y'all. This this feels like a good trout. Come on, baby. Nice and easy. He's not much bigger than the last one, but man, he really fought harder a lot harder. Whew, he's heavy. He's heavy. All right. Look at that. That's a nice one, y'all. All right. Let's get another one. I got a nice current flow coming out of this creek. And it's just taking my bait right down the creek and I got the wind at my back. It's really perfect because I can sit right here and fish probably up to 100 yards if I wanted to without having to move the kayak. Because every time I move the kayak, I can tell that it pushes fish. And if I can sit in one place, let the fish come to me. I feel like the fish like to swim against the current. It's a good setup. I'm almost scared to put out a second bait because it's just enough action that I get myself in trouble. I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna put one over here in shallow water, kind of out of the way. I'm just letting line out so that that bobber can continue right on down the creek and it'll have an opportunity to present that minnow in front of more fish than it would if it was sitting still. And you can tell when it's calm like this, even though it's windy above me, I'm down here protected. You can tell when that bobber, when that minnow starts getting antsy, when it starts getting agitated, it's got a fish more than likely looking at it. And it's usually not long after that, that that bobber is gonna go down. And I usually give it a, maybe like a four second count. I wanna give that trout a second to get that minna in his mouth because a lot of times they'll just grab it and take it and after a second or two they do the old and they'll suck it in oh hell just about lost a rod y'all that should have been a fish but i wasn't ready 
he just about took the rod out of the kayak. And I wasn't able to give him that second to get it in his mouth, so he didn't hook himself. There we go. It's a miss. I came back. All right, I got him. What that is it just jumped out of the water trout don't usually jump out of the water that's a rockfish that's why Y'all, I was reeling this bobber in and it was about 15 feet from the kayak and it just got pure smoked. I don't know if this is a puppy drum or what, but it's it's pretty good fish. That was hot. Y'all, this is a good fish. Holy cow. Can't believe I hooked that fish reeling in with a circle hook but he just tomahawked it that's a redfish pretty good redfish Holy cow, y'all. Check this out. Well, oh, bam. How about that? Very nice. There he goes. I think a lot of times trout will move just out of your cast range. Um, it's just a trout behavior. It's a it's a fish behavior in general um, But trout will definitely do it. They'll they'll sense your boat You can't help but make noise and eventually they just sort of slowly leave that area. So slight adjustments um, Are good you'll often notice that you're catching trout at the furthest reach of your cast that's because trout do that they move away from you, they sense that you're there. All right, y'all, that's a pretty good one wrong with that right. another pretty fish I could have done without that buddy that's all right he was mad 
The rig I'm using this morning to present this live bait is a slip bobber. When you're fishing in varying depths of water, a slip bobber is important so that you can keep that live bait in the strike range. And I usually like to keep it about a foot off the bottom, weighted down with either a quarter to a half ounce weight, at least enough to keep it down so that the live bait can't swim to the surface. There are many types of slip bobbers and they all work pretty well. There are also several videos on YouTube detailing how they work. My hook is either a 1 alt or a 2 alt circle hook. This may seem small, but trust me, it has no problem hooking the class of fish that I'm in this morning. I hope you have found this video both educational and entertaining. I hope that your next trip on the water is a good one. Drop comments and questions below, and I'll do my best to respond. We'll see you on the next one.